Hey, this is Isara with UX in Motion. Now, check this out. This is this cool Apple TV thing that you've probably seen uh, going around. It's really, really cool. You can create these 3D scenes. Here's another one um, using just design uh, like elements. Here's another one that I've created in inside of After Effects. And you can do so much with this. Um, and at, and I'm going to show you how to do this in part one. We're going to set up these 3D scenes. There's a few different ways to do it and think about it. Um, and I'm going to cover that. And then in part two, um, I'm going to cover how to set up your camera rig, which is a very interesting lesson. So make sure you don't miss that. And before I forget, um, if, if you don't know how to use After Effects or if you haven't really like jammed with it, go to uxemotion.net. Click here, put in your email address right here, and I'm gonna send you a free three-part video series on how to get started animating your, your UI with After Effects. It's the coolest thing out there. Everybody seems to love it. Go watch it, you'll thank me. Um, so the way this started was I was on a coaching call. I've, I've, I've got a mastermind uh, for the folks who've uh, purchased my training, and we have a weekly coaching call, and what came up in one of the coaching calls was how to do this sort of really cool 3D scene for the Apple TV. And I was on Dribble. I've got a, a collection here. If uh, if uh, you go to dribble.com slash Isara slash buckets, whatever, <laughs> whatever the URL says, there's a whole bunch of UI animations I've collected here. And I just want to go over these real quick so we make sure we're on the same page. These are really, really neat. You know, they're these basically the way you can think about them are these mini 3D After Effects scenes. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set those up. This one's pretty sweet. Um, this is one that I'm kind of riffing off of right here. And you can see there's like a foreground, middle ground, background. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. This one's pretty cool. There's lighting that's happening. There's a 3D shadow that's actually happening. There's a whole bunch of these really cool examples and folks are doing really cool things with them. I like this one because it kind of shows the, the hills move in a different way. There's a lot of depth to there. And uh, this is just like a very, very simple two layer one, which I think is you know incredibly effective. Okay, so let's get started on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just build these out for you and you're welcome to watch along. So we'll just start with this really simple one here. We're gonna do an import composition, um, make sure it's retain layer sizes. Great, double click that to open up your pre-comp and we'll get started. So the way I've built these, I'll just show you how I built these files um, because I believe that prepping these files the right way ahead of time will save you so much time on the back end. So that's why I always go through and show you how I set up these files ahead of time so that you're prepared and kind of understand the mindsets and tactics when you go into your professional projects, you're not like in the weeds. So I apologize if this takes extra time and you're like, dude, I know I've seen you do this a million times, but it's always just a good thing to kind of refresh yourself. So this is in uh, like Illustrator right here. I've got a cloud layer, a sun layer, background layer, and a shadow catcher layer. And this is just gonna be a layer where the shadow gets projected onto with the light. It's really, really cool. So that's all I did. So I brought it in, double clicked it. Here's my pre-comp right here. Well, my comp. So what I like to do is I like to pre-compose all of the work in this in this technique. I find it best to pre-compose, meaning that you can just take your comp and you can click and just drag it down to this composition window right here. And now it makes a new composition with your work just flattened down. And if I double click this, boom, I just go back to my pre-comp and my layers are all there. It's a really, really powerful way of working. And I'm just gonna actually pull this shadow catcher out. I'm gonna uh, delete this for now. So we're only working in this layer right here. And if you hit Command K, you can change your background color. If, if it bothers you, you can just bring up the uh, the color palette here. You know, I always like to work at uh, 60 frames a uh, second. It just gives you more data. Just a couple things you can think about. If you click this little transparency grid, it just hides your background color, which doesn't show through anyway. All right, so let's Command A to select all. And if you click this little uh, 3D switch here, it makes all your layers 3D. Now, what I want you to think about, this is an important thing here, is I want you to think about what's the layer that's gonna be closest 
um, that's going to be flat with the camera and what's going to be in front of it and behind it. And if that makes no sense to you, don't worry, I'll show you what I mean. But essentially in, in this version here, in this comp, the uh, Matthew McConaughey layer right here, he's the one at the, at the zero depth um, on the Z axis and there are things in front of him and behind him. But I chose that layer specifically for a reason. So with this one, it's gonna be fairly simple. It's just gonna be this background layer and we're just gonna put the other two out in front. So I'm gonna double click this again to get to my pre-comp. And I'm gonna uh, select all and hit P and S. All right, now check this out. What we're essentially gonna be doing is pushing these layers towards us in space, but then we also have to resize them to match the composition. Now you'll see what I mean in a second. If you hit Command R to bring up your rulers, I'm gonna go ahead and just box out some rulers on the sun right here. I'm just gonna drag some rulers down so that I know the X, Y uh, boundaries of this uh, sun layer here. I'm just gonna drag this info panel over here. And it's so funny, when you use the rulers, the info panel just pops up even if you don't want it whatsoever. So I'm just gonna Close that, it may pop up again. Okay, so what I'm gonna wanna do now is I'm just gonna push this sun layer towards the camera in space. So here's this little Z number right here. If, if I drag it to the right, it adds a positive value, which means it's moving away from us and it pushes it behind our little blue layer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this out at negative 100, okay? And you'll see when I do that, what's happening is it's actually, you know, it's visually larger. So that's why I wanna scale down to the original size because I wanna keep the composition I designed it at. Now I can click and drag in here, and when I do that, if I hold down the command key, it slows the rate by an inverse factor of 10. Alternatively, if, if you hold down the shift key while you're dragging, it scales it up by a factor of 10, which is very, very useful to know. But for now, I'm just gonna click and drag, hold it down, and I'm just gonna nudge it over using my arrow keys on my keyboard so that it's in the right place. And now I'm gonna do the same thing with the cloud layer. So I'm just gonna click and drag these guides and just reposition them so that I'm on the cloud layer. And if you want to, you can hide the sun if it's bothering you. Hide the sun, sun, and click and drag. Okay, so now I know the dimensions where I want my cloud to be. And I'm gonna put my cloud at negative 200, boom. And I'm just gonna scale this down holding the command key to do a small one. And you'll see that, um, you know, it's not scaling it uniformly, right? What's happening is this is actually in 3D, this is actually in perspective. And so because After Effects is essentially saying, even though there's no camera in the scene, we're viewing an active camera, meaning that if, if I move this, that when something scales, it's sort of like a fisheye, right? It's creating more distortion on either side. So that's why I have to nudge it a little bit. Now I turn the sun back on, so now I have my same composition here, and um, I, I can hide my guides by hitting Command uh, colon, boom, and I can hide my rulers by hitting Command R, so I'm done with that. Now, here's something really freaking awesome. If I go back to my pre-comp here, you'll see that it just comes in as its own layer, right? Nothing special whatsoever. But if I hit this little guy right here, this checkbox, that's the, uh, uh, collapse transformations, you may have no idea what that is, but if I click that, and if I click this 3D switch here, all of a sudden something really cool happens, which is that it no longer goes from being just a flat static 2D layer. After Effects is now treating this like all the work we've done is now represented as one layer here in this comp. I know this sounds really weird, but if I basically go to my custom view now, after Effects has created a boundary box that says, look, like these layers are actually in space and I can move this boundary box around here and it will update accordingly. And let's see here, do this. Will that do a real-time update? I'm not sure why it's not doing a real-time update, but there you go. So that's how we get that. Now that's really, really useful because now I, I can go back to my active camera here and I can now add my camera, new camera, here and I can choose whatever angle I want and say I'm happy with that, okay. And now I can add a light. So you can right click down here, go new light. 
and I can add a light here. I can add a point light, great. And I can add a little bit of shading and more importantly, a shadow. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a shadow now. now I can go back to my footage here, whoop, wrong file, footage and grab my shadow catcher layer. You can also just make like a new solid if you hit Command Y, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but you can just bring in the asset if you have a background color you like. Now, a couple things need to happen first. So you'll notice, first of all, there's no shadow that's happening. Even though the light here, if I double click it, it says it's casting a shadow, okay, but there's no shadow. I need to make this shadow catcher layer a 3D layer, so I click that, and it automatically accepts the light, so it's starting to light that. We, we actually don't want that, we just want it to be flat. So I can twirl down this little triangle here twirl down material options and say, we're not gonna accept lights. So where it says accept lights down here, say off, cool. And where it says accept shadows, we want that to be on, great. Now, it's we still don't see sh uh, shadows yet. What I have to do is I have to, you know, make sure it's set a distance away in space. Right now, the distance, uh, the Z position of this shadow catcher is at zero and so is this blue layer, so there's no distance here. So I'm just gonna move either this back in space or move my uh, composition here forward in space. So I'm just gonna move this back, it doesn't really matter. You'll see there's still no shadow. You're like, dude, what the hell, Isara? But you'll notice another thing is that you'll also wanna scale it up, right? Because you've moved it back so it's smaller, so you just wanna hit S for scale and just scale it up like that. Now, the reason we're not seeing a shadow yet is because this background is not casting a shadow. So if I twirl this down, twirl up the transformation, go back to the material options, and where it says cast shadows, I want that to be on. So now this background layer here is casting a shadow, and we, we can even tell individually which layers we want to respond to the, uh, the lights or not, but if I go back here, you'll see we do in fact have a shadow now, and I can, Double click my light and I can change this however I want. You know, I can make this be 100%, you know, like black, you know, with zero diffusion. So you can really see that. And now you'll see that if I go ahead and rotate this, you know, this is an actual 3D shadow that's being cast on here. So that's really, really cool. I'm just gonna put this back to maybe, uh, you know, 35%, you know, 75 blur. You can just experiment around with that and see what you like. Now again, say I didn't want the, the light to shade these two layers right here, I can just double click in here. And if I go back and I, if I select both these guys and I can twirl these down, material options, accept lights, I'm gonna say off, and that'll automatically apply it to the other layer as well if they've both been selected when I do that. I go back here and now you'll see that it's not accepting that. Um, and that's pretty much how you rig up this scene. You can do one quick little uh, like animation here, which I hope hopefully won't blow your mind, which is you can write a little script. You can type in wiggle and then some numbers here. And you can look up this more on your own time, but essentially it uses math to create a little randomized animation across your uh, like orientation here. And now if I hit the RAM preview, After Effects will go ahead and just build a little sort of random uh, like animation based on these numbers here. If, if, if I type in 10, it goes crazy, and or uh, if I change this 10 number to be higher, it starts to go crazy and you can do all kinds of cool stuff. But in the meantime, it's cool because you can see that we actually have a 3D scene here that's responding to lights and 3D shadows. All right, let's do the interstellar poster because that one's really cool. So I'm just gonna bring this one in, composition retain layer sizes, and we want to keep the layer styles, we can just merge them in, that's fine. Double click to bring up my pre-comp, and I'm also gonna pre-comp this guy as well. So I'm just gonna drag, um, actually what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to make a new composition, because if I just pre-comp this guy, it'll be full size, and I actually want it to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new composition by 1920, 1080, perfect, and I'm just gonna drag this little poster guy into here and scale him down, boom, okay. And all I'm doing is I'm just creating a new composition at HD resolution and just bringing this pre-comp in that we just imported. And that's it, that's all I did. <laughs> and I can even hit the switches if I want. 
to, to make it uh, that cool 3D shape thing and click the 3D switch right here. So now we can see that if I go to my, where it says active camera, if I hit a custom view, this is just an After Effects custom view that it makes. Um, and there's no camera or anything, so it's just, it's just like whatever. But if I go in here now, I can then again rig this up so that in my master comp, we'll call this interstellar master comp here. That's where things will start to get really, really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna select all for these guys, hit the 3D switch right here. And now I'm choosing which layer I want to be at that zero spot. If if it's behind that, it's gonna start to move really quickly. And if it's um, in front of you, it's also gonna start to move really quickly. And I, I'm just gonna bring up the reference here again so we can see that these are actually, there's all this stuff going on right here. And this is gonna be a little bit different because we're actually not gonna be um, using a 3D shadow. This is actually just gonna be a layer style because After Effects doesn't let you have a mask on here and a 3D shadow, which is bizarre to me, but we'll just deal with that. So I'm gonna double click this, get into here. We've got our layers here. This middle layer, I didn't name it <laughs> very well, but that's this guy, our kind of hero layer. So I'm gonna select all, hit P to bring these up, and now I'm just gonna start moving these around. So the snow layer, I know that it, I want it to be out a ways. So I'm just gonna make that like, you know, we're gonna move it out. Let's make it like negative 400. And we want this middle layer is gonna stay at zero. This middle back layer, that's just this little guy right here. It's gonna move a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna scoot that back, let's say uh, 150. All right, and you'll see visually, it goes back in space, so visually it's now smaller. So I am gonna to wanna to hit S, and if I hold down the Shift key while I hit S, it adds the property right here, and I can scale it up, boom, and just kinda of nudge it up so it's in the right spot here. Cool. And my background layer, I'm gonna put a ways back. Let's do it like 400, and I'm gonna scale this up too. And if you're wondering how I built this, Dude, I just went into Photoshop and I just hacked it, right? You can go to do a Google uh, like image search for this image and then use the pen tool and cut it out and then clone the stuff. I didn't do anything fancy, just some basic Photoshop skills, y'all. That's all it was. Okay, so I got that. Now I'm gonna go back into my master comp here and I can see, boom, I've created this 3D scene. That's awesome, that's exactly what I want. So let's do this. Let's put it back on the active camera again. Zoom out. Now, what I want you to notice here is that by doing this, with this, in this particular instance, all this artwork is now just like all over the place, right? It's just bleeding past here and here and here and here. Now, here's why, here's one of the reasons pre-comping is so freaking awesome is because I can just put a mask on this whole layer and it will totally be sweet. So if I click my mask tool, and I can use the rounded rectangle. Um, one great tip is if you're hovering over a certain panel and you hit the tilde key, which is to the left of the one on the keyboard, whatever panel you're in goes full screen, which is extremely helpful. And I can you know, zoom in and stuff. Now make sure your layer is selected or it won't draw the mask. But with your layer selected, I can now click and drag and it's actually gonna just mask off just my poster and you'd have to get pretty precise you know if you're working on a real project where this is like every pixel is extremely important you know i get that that this is maybe not the most accurate thing that i showed you for a real project but like boom you've masked the whole thing off and now if uh, you go back to your custom view the whole thing's been masked and you'll see that some of the artwork may start to bleed out with the angle Right, so that's just something that you're gonna have to wanna go back and forth with to get perfect. But now, same thing, I can, if you hold down, uh, if you hit shift uh, question mark, it snaps your artwork to the uh, fit to your viewer, which is really cool. Now I can make a camera. If I just control click down here, new camera. And again, I can choose the angle here and I'll get into this in the next lesson. This is where this stuff is really, really cool. Um, but I'll just make a new camera right here, bam. And you'll see 
everything just kind of shifted a little bit and that's based on the lensing of the camera here if i had chosen like a different camera there's actually a great hotkey for it. it's very simple command option shift c <laughs> uh if i chose a really like a fish eye boom you start to get more distortion there and i'll talk about that in the next lesson but let's do one that's a little bit more normal like a 35 say just shifts a little bit and now I, I can see that if I was to then start to rotate this guy, I have a whole scene in here. It's like a real 3D scene, but it's weirdly 2D, right? It's kind of like this mind bender thing, and I love it. And again, I can just control click to, to create an expression on this property, and I can write wiggle 110. I played around with, with some numbers. This one, this one was best for kind of demoing purposes. And now if I hit the um, the RAM preview, you can see it just kind of play through and it's a real scene. Now, one of the issues is that we don't have a shadow catcher. And it took me a while to figure this out that you can't have a mask on a 3D layer with all these things clicked and have it cast a 3D shadow. So instead what we'll do is we'll do kind of the lame, not, not my favorite uh, solve here, but it works pretty damn well, which is if, if you control click your pre-comp, go to your layer styles, drop shadow option. It's just like in Photoshop. So you can twirl this down and you can set your distance. Let's crank this up and we wanna change the angle. Let's put it over here, say, and it's all the same things that Photoshop has. So I can drop my you know, opacity. I can make it like uh, more blurry you know, softer, whatever I want. Now when I ran preview that again, it'll do a pretty damn good job of creating a shadow. Now it's not the same as in the previous one where it's a true 3D shadow, but it's still pretty cool. And you get the full 3D scene like that. And you could totally put a light on here if you want and then choose which layers you want to respond to that light. So if I go new light, yeah, we don't need to cast shadows this time. So we can just leave that off. That's cool. And you'll see that the light, that the artwork will start to respond to the light in a very interesting way. Now, one of the things I found was that when I was setting these scenes up with lights and trying to get the light to really kind of work the way I want, like, look, you can do crazy stuff there. Um, I can just back this off or move it in. Um, in order to get the material, like you'll see, you'll notice in these renders here, maybe not that one because it's not right, but like this one, you'll see that there's a, a light, right? Like you're actually seeing this gradient of light moving. So one of the things I noticed when I was like tweaking this was that you kind of have to experiment with your light in your pre-comp. So double click back in here, you know, you can right click again, make new light. And this is like a temporary light. And I'm just gonna add that at the top maybe move it up to the top, move it back because it's the position is really crazy. Back off here. Now, what I can do is if I close these down, if I go to like say my middle layer, twirl this down, go to my material options, you can start to play around with these numbers down here, the ambient, diffuse, specular, all this stuff, and you can actually start to uh, create like a highlight area that's much more responsive to the light itself. Um, and you, this is kind of just like, you just gotta play around with this to really find the sweet spot that you like. This is gonna be a little bit more blown out than it should be, but, um, but say we kind of just play around with this, right? And we're like, okay, cool. Now I just turn this light off in this pre-comp and go back to my master comp. And if I hit the preview again, you'll see that you're really, the light, is really lighting these layers, right? And it, it's obviously way too blown out and looks like shit, but like, <laughs> excuse my French, we're on the internet, son. But uh, this is actually like a real light in space and it's actually, and the layers are responding to that layer, which is really, really cool. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this last one now uh, with this gear thing, which is gonna be a little bit different uh, uh, setup as well. So command I to import composition, retain layer, si layer sizes. We want to merge layer styles into footage. This is a very important point. If you bring in a, um, a project here in this instance, I'm just going to pop this open in Photoshop so you can see that what you'll have here is on this background layer, um, we have a layer style, a gradient layer style applied, right? For this, this plate here, this actually it's the top layer, not the background 
layer, but if I twirl this down, there's actually a gradient being applied here, which is fine. You can bring it to After Effects, no problem, it's happy. The thing is, is that when you go to apply a light to a layer that has a layer style that is in, in the uh, like editable mode, the light will no longer take effect. Um, so you wanna make sure that the layer style is merged. If you're not sure, just leave a comment or something. And be like, dude, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> um, and I will show you another quick uh, technique. If you don't wanna do this pre-comping option here, you can do it right from this panel right here. So I just select the layers that I want to uh, pre-compose, and there's a command here, composition, or sorry, layer pre-composed, command, control, C, command shift C. <laughs> I don't know why I said control. Command shift C puts it in a new composition. We want to move all the attributes into the new one and let's call it gears precomp. Great, and just opens it up and I'm happy with that and I can select all, hit that little 3D thing again to make these all 3D and now I just want to think, okay, how do I want these layers to appear, right? When we see this reference here, what's happening is that this plate here is at zero depth and everything else is behind it. So it just pays to think out a little bit what you wanna do. So I'm gonna leave this at zero and I'm not gonna mess with that and I'm gonna shift select these guys and hit P and hit shift S to bring up the scale. And we're just gonna do the same trick with the guides that we did before. So I'm gonna hit command R for rulers and you could make these rulers in Photoshop by the way and then just bring them in uh, as guides and then After Effects will be happy with uh, those guides from Photoshop as well. That'll totally work. So I'm gonna do the big gear first, this top gear, and I'm gonna put them back. Let's see, what should we do like? Um, let's do like uh, one, let's do like 150, sure. Ah, let's do 200, let's go crazy. And if, if, if all this UI stuff is crazy here and you're like, dude, what is going on? If you hit Command Shift H, it'll hide the UI elements, which is great. Except in this case, <laughs> it actually put it behind this dark layer. So the UI uh, like elements are kind of helpful because all I'm looking at is this bounding box. So I'm just gonna scale this up so that it just fits that bounding box like that. Beautiful. Now the bottom gear, we're gonna do that, and I'm just gonna move the guides out. And really, I'm just dra dragging them to where the bounding box edge is. I'm getting pretty precise there. Boom, move this guy in here, sweet. And now we're gonna move this guy back. Let's do like 400. This may look like terrible, but we'll, you know, that's why you gotta play with it. Move that in there. And now this hole, this little background thing here, um, you can just scoot that back, whatever. You can just kind of eyeball it so it's behind there. I'm just grabbing this little Z depth and then scale it up so it's just, you know, somewhere where it's covering things up, right? So essentially what you're doing is you're just creating this little, this guy right here. If I hit Command colon, hide the guides, Command R, hide the rulers. And if you hit C, when you're in this custom view mode, you can orbit around your composition. And it doesn't actually change anything. It's just a preview mode that you're in and that's all we've done here um now we can go back to the our gear here and i can hit my little switches guy my continuous rasterize and my 3d layer make this a 3d layer uh inside here which is extremely useful this is just great because i mean you could pl apply filters and effects and do all kinds of crazy stuff this is just a cool way of working and now again i'm gonna make this a 3D layer and just move it back in space. I can move the position and this time it has to go way back here and then I hit S to scale. So I wanna scale it up and I'm gonna twirl down my material options and say I want it to accept shadows. Yes, you accept shadows, accept lights off, great. Now I'm just gonna make a light here, boom. Point light, cast shadows, yes please, that works for me. And you'll see here that, again, we gotta tweak a couple stuff, right? A couple stuff, that was brilliant English, you saw it. We have to tweak a couple things. Let's make none of these except lights. All we're going for is the shadow here. So I gotta twirl this down, material options, accept lights, off for all of them, cast shadows, sure. Let's turn that all on, come back here, and we see we have this 
shadow <laughs> here, which is kind of this weird shadow, right? Because essentially this whole layer here, if I go to my custom view here, you can see that the whole layer is in fact what's casting the shadow and there's just like some turbo weirdness going on. So it might be better to do like the 3D drop shadow effect here. Um, you know, we could try that out, control click here and go, I don't know why I just hid that layer. That was pretty funny. I want to hide the light. Control click here, layer styles, drop shadow. I have no idea what this is going to look like. Actually, it could be like super awesome or super crappy. I want to change my distance here. So I want to crank this up and you can see it's making another complicated shadow, which is not what we want. So this would definitely require some finessing um, more than I want to get into in this tutorial right now because um, I just want to show you how to set up these 3D scenes in this way so you'd have some powerful tools. And you could see this little wiggle script here does a pretty good job of doing an animation. This isn't the exact animation that we want to create though. And what we want to create is something where we actually have a camera here. I'm just going to show you what this looks like um, before I end this, this lesson here. I'm going to go to my um, custom view here and you can see that what's going on is there's actually a motion path on this camera that this camera is rotating around. So if we look here and I can actually put this guy in, um, in wireframe to make it a little bit easier. So you can see that what's going on here is in fact that there is a this little shape, this little circle. The camera is actually moving in a circle but its point of interest is staying on our artwork right there. So anyway, that's how you set up these 3D scenes in a really, really cool way. Really simple. You can see you might want to think through it a little bit before you jump in there, just in terms of like how the effect that you're going for. Um, in the next lesson, I will show you how to rig up these 3D cameras, which are super, super awesome. That'll be a lot shorter lesson. It's really quick. Um, but I just didn't want to cover it in this one because there was a lot to cover. So thanks for watching. My name is Isara. You're watching UX in Motion. Uh, subscribe to the channel to get more videos or go to uxinmotion.net, put in your email, and I will send you updates with free video lessons and training. Drop me a comment below if you have any uh, suggestions or if you're stuck or whatever. I read the comments. I reply. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next lesson.